Luxury car companies are coming in hot. They've got a bunch of new offerings. They've got a bunch of new ideas. They've got a bunch of new features, many of which are the things that consumers have been asking for. More range, more power, more seats. Who knows? But we're going to have a quick chat about that and all kinds of other things. I'm here with my buddy Herbert from Brighter. I'm Brian. Welcome to Future Aza. <laughs> It's been an exciting year in EVs. Would you agree? <laughs> it's exciting if you see a lot of movement, right? Changes in who's uh, uh, dying, <laughs> who's succeeding, <laughs> which is very few. Yeah. Well, and it's tricky because they're at a real turning point in the industry. We're looking at big yeah. players like Toyota saying things like, it is impossible to meet these standards. Well, yeah, when you only offer one car and it's a compliance joke and you're still betting on hydrogen, what are you doing? All right. Well, with that said, this is interesting. Mercedes-Benz mm. previews the next CLA and breaks EV distance record in testing. A CLA covered 2,300 miles in 24 hours in testing. Now, this was around a track. Uh, this will be on sale next year. And of course, there will be gasoline versions as well, which is very strange decision. But this car was hauling it around the track and still managed to get seven and a half miles per kilowatt hour. They've done tests like this before with less production ready ones. This one is production ready. Even their impressive stuff that they did last year, they did a drive from Dubai to somewhere else and achieved well over five miles uh, per kilowatt hour. And they were doing it in a car that had airbags, had side mirrors. First question is, uh, how how important and impressive is this? So first of all, it's 2,300 miles and 24 hours of testing, right? So what is it? Can you scroll down? Yes, sir. What is it? Uh, yeah, we'll scroll down to what exactly is the battery capacity? Oh, I'm not sure. Because they say in 24 hours, which means that, um, right, it's like uh, charging, including 40 recharging stops. Yes. Yeah. But each one was only ten, six hours and 40 minutes. Let's see. So it was stationary for six hours and 40 minutes, but it averaged yeah, there it is. 95 miles At the miles top, it hour. says um, 750 miles on a single charge. I think that's the critical thing. So, yeah, yeah, that's very impressive, right? If you can get any past anything past 500 miles. You know, we've seen this before. We've seen many different one-off vehicles that say this can do, you know, this many miles because that's what it's built for. Well, what is this price? How uh, acceptable would this be when you actually do this in mass production? Can you do this in mass production? Can you sell this? So is this just a prototype? So it's hard to really judge at this point if this is a big deal. But 750 miles on a single charge, um, if it's charged fast enough, if if all that is, you know, hits all these efficiency matters, efficiency measures. That's great. We, you know, we know that technology here is going to continue to improve, but we've also heard Elon say many times before, he said that, you know, every day we hear of a lab out there with these batteries. It's one thing to see these things being done in a lab or even a prototype. It needs to be something that can be mass produced. That's a critical decision making. And then it needs to be at a price point. That's, that's the only reason Tesla sells cars that are 300 miles you know, 320 miles is their max because they don't think it actually is necessary. The consumer doesn't need, like if you come in and say this one is 500 miles, does that actually increase the number of sales for, you know, typical city drivers? I think Tesla made that decision that they're going to, you know, have lower price points, uh, lower margins on their part or higher margins in this case. Now, the other thing that I thought was interesting about that article, if you go to the very bottom of that article, they talk about creating a gas version. Mm -hmm. The new mm -hmm. gas version. So let me tell you, if it was really true that Mercedes invented something so incredible that a 750 mile per charge and it makes all the things, would you create a gas version of this? I'm going to say that, yes, they would, because what okay. this article tells me is their consumers don't know what they actually want. They don't really want 750 miles of range. They just think they do. Look, yeah. if you think that's what you need, I'll sell it to you. But to me, the more exciting number is this 7.44 miles per kilowatt hour. I believe that is absolutely doable, which mm -hmm. means that the cyber cab is going to have more range than we expected, because the cyber cab probably weighs half what this car weighs. So I think that's exciting. Another bit of luxury car news, Lucid Air auditions for the California Highway Patrol. This car has a bunch of advantages that might make it a good fit 
the only shortcoming being price. It's probably quite expensive, but you see it's got the metal roof, which suggests it is the base base model, mm -hmm. which would have about 435 horsepower, which is plenty. You can't outrun a radio. This is a fast car, even in its base configuration. And you're not going to be sitting idling all day, burning gas just to keep the computer screen and air conditioning running. And it's got the most range. This is for the Highway Patrol, which currently in California doesn't have any um, electric vehicles, even though they have Ford, uh, they have Ford products but they don't have the Lightning or the Mach-E, both of which have police variants available. What do you think about this for the California Highway Patrol? Yeah, obviously there's so many advantages for electric vehicles. So I think anytime I hear police or a government entities buying more electric vehicles, i um, very happy that that makes sense. Lucid as a choice though, luxury vehicle, uh, the price point, is that the right one to do this? Um, you know, I saw this article just very recently and whenever you see articles about bashing Tesla, you never know what part of it is real, what part of it is exaggerated. I think we've seen many, many, uh, you know, announcements from police departments who bought Tesla's electric vehicles saying how great it is in all fronts. This article, New York Post, that's, you know, hint number one, they said mm -hmm. that their study, this police uh, department study showed that while they love the fact that the cars, these EVs are faster acceleration and all that, they still didn't like it because so they appreciated the steering, the acceleration, the vehicle speed, but they didn't like it because they couldn't get the car to going off road or jumping curbs. And then they said that the autopilot, I don't get this part, the autopilot safety caused delays and even stopped the cars when they tried to drive on the side of the road. Why can't you just turn that off? Uh, the cramped cabin caused their duty belt and bulletproof vest to jut into the passenger seat, making it nearly unusable. So this is you know, everything they just said there would apply to this Lucid. <laughs> Even look, look how low the Lucid is on the ground because it's a luxury vehicle. Um, I just don't understand. So, anyways, if this is true, like you know, this, this, these points sound like that they're actually really, you know, they they don't sound off base here. Like you need a car that can jump curbs, but you could set up your Model Threes and Ys in higher suspension. If you wanted to, I'm not sure about the Lucid, but sure. I'm sure you could. I'm sure you could. Uh, my concern with curb hopping in this is it might be that the brakes are too large to put on uh, higher profile tires. Uh, so, but hey, if, if they say it works, the real reason they want it is because the range is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Lucid is excited because they've still got all that gravy from the Saudi uh, sovereign fund. Mm -hmm. And the Saudis are all in on Lucid. Or are they? Because Croatia's mm. Rimac to power Saudi Arabia's first mm -hmm. homegrown EV brand. And uh, Sear is through Foxconn. We know Foxconn had wanted to build cars. Uh, this is it. A venture between the PIF and electronic giant Foxconn announces collaboration. These are two companies that have uh, very different expertise. Rimac makes an amazing drive. And Rimac uh, is Volkswagen, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, so this is very exciting stuff. Uh, yeah. What do you, what do you well, make of this? First of all, yeah, it's clear that Saudi Arabia, you can't just bet your horse on one horse, right? You got to uh, right. go, go across here. And uh, sounds like a good partnership. But um, yeah, they're, they're going to try to build an electric vehicle, do what they can. And then you need partners, you need to hire people. So yeah, this partnership announcement is still a million years from a vehicle production. Yeah, It'll be, I think this will be another bottomless pit of money uh, for them uh, to, to, hey, if you like pouring money down a hole in the ground, mm -hmm. what a great way to do it. <laughs> so if we're talking luxury, let's talk about real luxury. You know who the Cadillac of automobiles used to be? Cadillac. Mm -hmm. Well, right. Cadillac wishes to be the Cadillac of automobiles once again, although I'm not sure it has the same cachet it once did. This is their mini Escalade. They call it something ridiculous. The Mystique. Uh, Mystique is that what it Vistique. is? Mystique. Mystique. Uh, <laughs> and it's funny because it's a Celestic, so maybe this is a Vistic, but that sounds. That's what it is. Yeah, Vistic. Vistic really? Oh, look at Vistic, <laughs> Herbert. Look at this dick. <laughs> so I don't know, you guys. <laughs> Lyric, optic, escalated, ick. <laughs> 
Yeah, but like the Celeste Dick is a pretty ridiculous. I don't know. But this is great. This is a proper big SUV for people yeah. who want proper big SUVs. Uh, guess which battery they're putting in 80, it, of 000. course. Yeah, mm -hmm. 80 grand. Hey, 80 grand, that's not bad. That's that's right around, you know, Model X pricing. Mm -hmm. And some people just don't want a Model X. Uh, <laughs> the dual motor runs on 102 kilowatt hour battery versus the 200 kilowatt hour one uh, powering the Escalade. So that's, they say they're going to get 300 miles of range. I'd like that to be true. Maybe it is, uh, but it is uh, not necessary. I mean, yeah. 240 volt charging system. That's great. Mm -hmm. If you scroll mm -hmm. a little bit up, I thought I saw that the home charging system is $7,300. Oh boy. Look at that. That's, that seems crazy, but that's, um, it sounds oh, the like vehicle it's a to home vehicle bundle. to home. Okay. That's mm -hmm. the vehicle to home bundle. Yep. Okay. Still, still the 102 i assume is the base model because there's no way this car is getting 300 miles out of out of that yeah. and uh yeah it'll be going into production during a much less favorable environment for evs uh but yeah that's fine uh we'll see how that plays out it's a big battery it's a big battery and the last thing i wanted to show you get your thoughts on here is this little gem Last little gem I wanted to show you. There are only two companies. This is from Roland Percher, uh, who I've met in person uh, when I was in Austria. Uh, Tesla had the fourth highest Q3 yeah. net profit yeah. of the major auto companies. Fourth highest. Number 20th in rank for production. Number four for profit. Let's take a look here. Uh, what you want to see is the green being larger than the yellow. Green is 2024 versus last year. Toyota. Went from seven and a half billion down to four. That's that's alarming. GM de just dead even. Tesla up sixteen percent. Then you look at Mercedes down fifty four. Volkswagen down sixty four mm -hmm. percent. BMW down eighty four percent. I said on your show the other day I thought it was down by a third. I was wrong. It was way over two thirds. Way over three quarters. That's a lot. What's going on with these companies? Do you know? Yeah, this is this is the changing of the guard. This is a beautiful. This uh, chart showing you, first of all, it's all cars, right? It's not just electric vehicles. This is just the com car company. All Toyota right. makes almost everything is gas cars, hybrids, all these things. And they're up. And what you're seeing is a dramatic fall. Uh, I was looking at this one chart about Toyota and it was, it was, uh, I was going, whoa, look at it. It's going up, right? It's, it's increasing. Everything's great. And then I can't remember who was watching me goes, take a look at that last line forecast for 2024 because in 2024 it's not ended yet and they didn't report it but they forecasted it and it's a sharp drop so wait until you see 2024 numbers are presented so this is the change between electric vehicles being bought and gas cars which peaked three years ago 2022 was its peak basically peak gas cars that's it ever since then it's falling and then you'll see the evs going up so all these car companies are still selling gas cars they're starting to feel it now. This is the year they'll start slowing that down. So margins will start to fall. And uh, and you and I have been covering very much what's happening in China. So a lot of these, both European brands and American brands, and you know the Japanese brands, they do a lot of business in China. They used to. That was their bread and butter. But they've all, all of them, fallen down to almost like single digits uh, and just almost out of there. And so that is a huge impact, right? It's such a big deal. It's a big market that they've lost. That's going to show up now. And then what happens is the ripple effect because, you know, once you lose that market, you start to uh, struggle everywhere else and then your, your, your margins will be hit. So I, I think this is just the beginning. You'll see Tesla there at number four. Next year will be number three. Two years from now will be number one. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, everybody else is gone. These will be dead. These car companies will be dead. Sure I don't know if they will. A I lot mean, their of them brands are... will list, the brands will continue, but they'll be bought and they'll be different owners. I don't know. I think Volkswagen and Mercedes are too big to fail in Germany. I think Toyota and Honda are too big to fail in Japan. I think Hyundai and Kia are too big to fail in Korea. I think a lot of these companies would get government support if it needed to, but I don't think that's necessarily something we need to worry about just yet. And I think Tesla's auto sales are going to stagnate 
until RoboCab, and then it's going to be a game over. Mm -hmm. But that's maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe RoboCab, maybe people won't want it. Oh, come on. Guys, in the comments, what is the Cadillac of automobiles? Let us know. Everybody else, like, subscribe, head over to Herbert's channel, see what he's up to. He does fantastic work, and he is a great guy. Everybody else, you know, uh, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots whenever I get to.